The thruster will end up going down as being the biggest defining moment, I think, of, of surfboard design. If you asked a young kid what a surfboard was today, well, you know, it's a piece of foam with fiberglass on it, and it's got three fins. Well, I think a perfect surfer is very close to a perfect human being. When I was young, I was living at Collaroy, and my father used to take us to the beach, and we'd do swimming training every morning. Uh, we'd see the surfers out, and I always thought that was a better option than swimming training. Oh, it's definitely an art form. It's one of the most beautiful things that ever happened in the history of the world, is the modern surfboard. The main motivation for having a new design is that you can surf better. I was having trouble with the three to four foot range because it was too loose. Simon being the big bloke that he is, he, he, was, he couldn't ride the twin fin, he couldn't effectively use it. The day that I first surfed the thruster was at Narrabeen. I wasn't really expecting too much from the design. The waves were one to three foot, maybe some four foot sets. It was really good testing waves to try this design. The first wave that I took off on, I was just totally surprised the way that it performed. In effect, it was combining the best elements of the single fin and the twin fin, which was just, you know, beyond my wildest dreams. So Simon got on the phone with me and started, we started making tentative arrangements and he came over about a month later and we unwrapped these, what was the second, third, and fourth thrusters ever made. The next day, great surf down at Sunset Cliffs. I took the smallest of the boards out. First wave was amazing. People surf just the way they are. I can watch a guy walk across the room and I know exactly how he's gonna surf. Their personality shows up. The original reception we got um, in, in Florida at the trade show there was everybody was kind of just giggling. Simon came up with this three fin board and you know I remember looking at it for the first time and going, the fins are too small, Simon. The first time I saw a thruster was the Caton contest. Huntington Beach, I guess 1980, 1980 or 1981 and it was Simon Anderson walking down the beach with it and I was standing on the pier and there were guys on the pier laughing at him. Simon was a little disheartened, and, and uh, he told me, quite frankly, that he's going to have to go out and prove it. Gary kind of looked at me after that and said, well, Simon, you're going to have to win a contest. So I went to Bells Beach a little bit ahead of schedule with the uh, Rip Curl Pro coming up in Easter. It was a beautiful day, lovely blue sky. Uh, the water was in fact green, 12 feet, and just pumping and got three or four nice rides. Board felt unbelievable. Carving these quite amazing arcs, I think, that hadn't been seen at Bells Beach to that point. One of the new stars on the surfing scene is 22-year-old Simon Anderson. In the past six months, Simon has won three of the four Australian contests, and by the end of the year has a good chance of becoming the world professional surfing champion. Simon, the professional surfing circuit concludes in Hawaii. You're on your way there very shortly. At the end of the contest season, do you think that you'll be number one or on top of it? Yeah, well, I'm reasonably confident, Jack. Uh, I've been putting in a lot of work. Americans were feeling quite uh, brittle by this time because the Australians had come over to Hawaii and pretty much dominated. When Mark Richards came over, and he was the best surfer in the world at the time. They came in and, and uh, you know, just matter of factly beat everybody. When Terry Fitzgerald came over, he was the best surfer in the world at the time. Um, the, the Aussies were putting a lot more time in the water than we were. They had warm water, and they, they took advantage of it. They didn't have McDonald's down the street everywhere. Hawaii was the end of the year, as it always is, and the ultimate proving ground. And there was still some speculation that perhaps this thruster design wouldn't work in the extra power and the extra size that you do get in Hawaii. So back in the early 70s through the 80s, it was 
kind of cowboy territory and the locals were quite protective of their break. I judged uh, the 80 pipe masters and then uh, I was back over again to do the 81. It was disbelief on everybody's part when they saw the boards going down to the beach. Uh, a lot of skeptics. We're on the beach at Bonsai Pipeline where Simon Anderson showed the world what he could do. So the Hawaiians were, I think, real brittle because, uh, you know, here's, this is their place, you know. It was pretty dangerous surf. There'd been quite a few injuries. The waves were quite big that day. I really wanted to prove the thruster at the pipe. And there was about five minutes to go and I really hadn't had a decent wave. He got this really big wave and pulled into it. I took off and I was, I was extremely deep and I was really frustrated and, and quite angry at this stage and I really didn't think I could make the wave. But it was of, of a size and it was running down the reef so fast that everybody wrote him off. And just as I'm coming out, my board starts drifting a little bit sideways on the foam ball in the barrel. And then everybody gasped and screamed because Simon got blown out of the wave way down the line. Uh, when I came flying out of the barrel, the crowd erupted on the beach. It was you know, quite an amazing thing. And you could believe it. It was amazing. It was really amazing. There was no question in our minds. Every judge threw down a 10. And that pretty much sealed the deal for Simon. So he won the Masters. After the contest was over, he got applause. Simon really got applause. One of the things that happened with the thrusters, it was such a great design that, quite frankly, it just pretty much ended all uh, work. You could have patented three fins on a surfboard at one point, uh, but now it's been given to the world, and nobody can do it. Globally, every, I would say, just about every shaper on the planet started making three fin boards. Everybody had a thruster within about a year and a half. When Simon showed up in 81 with the thruster, it, it, it changed the surfing world from then on.